Hey everyone, this is Bradley Bush again with another algebra video for you. Today we're talking about imaginary numbers and our to-do list is right here. So the first thing we'll do is we'll talk about the imaginary unit i. We'll give a definition and then we'll talk about understanding powers of i. We'll talk about adding and subtracting imaginary numbers and then finally we'll talk about multiplying imaginary numbers. I'll also put a list of these contents and the timestamps in the video description. So if you want to skip ahead, you're more than welcome to. Let's get going. All right, the imaginary unit I. So by definition, the imaginary unit I is defined as the square root of negative one. So I just means the square root of negative one. It's, this, it's the same thing. It's just kind of like pi is 3.1418, blah, 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 blah. I also means something, and it means the square root of negative 1. So if we take the square root of negative 1 and we square both sides, so we square the left, we square the right, the left side becomes I squared and the right side becomes negative 1. And that is where we get the second part of the definition, I squared equals negative 1. So whenever you see an I with imaginary numbers, just know that it means the square root of negative 1. And whenever we're playing around with, with negatives underneath even indexed radicals, we always want to change to I form, which means we always want to take the left-hand side here, the negative underneath the radical, and change it into an I in front of the radical. It can be in back if you want, but I prefer in front. So this is how it really happens. We can take the negative, we can split it up, negative b, for example, is the same thing as negative one times b. Then we can use the powers of exponents, which translate to the powers inside of radicals, and we can break them apart and have the square root of negative one be separate, a be multiplied by the square root of b. And we know that the square root of negative one is just i. So we replace the square root of negative 1 with i. And there we go. We have i times the square root of b. So whenever you see negatives under even indexed radicals, the index is right here. It's assumed to be a 2 if there's nothing there. So they don't write it, but that's the index. Whenever that index is even, if there's a negative underneath the radical, you should always take it out in front as an i. And this, by the way, the i times the square root of something is called the principal square root of a negative number. Here's an example. Square root of negative 25. According to our rule here, then we could just rewrite this as the i can come out front, and then we have 25, and the square root of 25 we know is 5. So we could do i times 5, or it's often more likely written 5 times i. I put the i in front when there's a radical, just so you know that it's not underneath the radical. But if there's no radical here, if it's just a number, then the convention is to put the i afterwards. So the square root of negative five, 25 is just 5i. All right, understanding powers of i. So there are a lot of words here to describe just a very simple thing. If you're given i to some really big number, well, that really big number is n. And it's kind of hard to think about what that would be because i to 100, would you, I guess you would just multiply i by itself 100 times and see what you got. But you can also notice that there's a pattern that you can take advantage of. You can see i to the 0 is 1, i to the 1 is i, i, to the, I squared is negative 1, and i cubed is negative i. But notice that it repeats after this. i to the fourth is 1, which is the same thing as i to the 0. And i to the fifth is i, which is the same thing as i to the first power. So i to the first power, i to the fifth power, i to the ninth power, they're all the same thing. So they repeat in multiples of 4 here. So i to the sixth is the same thing as i squared. i to the seventh is the same thing as i to the third power. So we take advantage of this. And we say that i to a really big number, that's that n. That n is the really big number. 
And if we take that n and we divide it by 4, then there's going to be a remainder. And we're going to call that remainder r. So r can be either 0, 1, 2, or 3. So all we do is take that really big number, divide it by 4, get the remainder, and then we can substitute i to the really big number with i to whatever the remainder was. And it's super simple. Let's try an example. So i to the 25. I really don't want to multiply by i by itself 25 times to figure out what this is. So I'm going to use that little trick. We divide 25 by 4, and that gives us 6 with remainder 1. So all we really need to do is remember this first line, and that'll give us everything. So we know that i to the 25 is the same thing as i to the first power, because that's the remainder when we divide 25 by 4, which just gives us i. So i to the 25, just the same thing as i. Pretty easy, huh? Adding and subtracting imaginary numbers. This is also pretty easy because you because you treat an imaginary number just like you would treat a variable like x. So here we have five i's, and here we have two i's. So five plus two gives us seven of them, seven i's. And down below, we have five i, and if we take two away, then that means we only have three left. So we have three i. So that's not bad, right? How about multiplying imaginary numbers? So this also follows the conventions of the real numbers, meaning the distributive property works, all of those things work. We just have to keep in mind these four little pieces of information. Because, for example, when we multiply 5i by 2i, the 5 and the 2 give us 10, and the i and the i give us i squared. But really, what is i squared? i squared is the same as negative 1, so we'll need to substitute that in. 10 times negative 1, which gives us negative 10. So 5i times 2i gives us negative 10. The second example, we have negative 6 times 3i. The negative 6 and the 3 give us negative 18. And we have the i. And we're done. So you multiply the the real parts together, and then you multiply the i's together. And then if the i is a number that's bigger than 2, then you would simplify it. And that's it. That's really it. So working with imaginary numbers is pretty straightforward. Hope this helps. If it did, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and hope you have a great day.